Hey guys, 420 Scene here. Hope everyone's having a super stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you're watching the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grow and smoke videos, check us out on Patreon. I'm gonna have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. Studio looks a little different as you guys can see. We literally just flipped the studio long ways instead of wide ways. Why? You guys probably can't see, but the way the studio was set up made my mix sound like absolute garbage. It was just really boomy, and I still gotta put the bass traps up on both sides of the wall over here, but the low frequencies especially and the high frequencies, they were just kind of bouncing everywhere, even with the acoustic treatment that we have. So now that we switch up the studio, my sound is a lot better. So in case you're wondering what happened to the setup, that's exactly what happened. I've been checking out the comment section, and I've been seeing a lot of people asking about closet grow tips. So I figured I am the man to give you guys these tips. So so here we go. Quick side note, my favorite YouTuber of all time, Xcode, he's been asking me especially for grow help, which I think is pretty insane. I mean, I've been watching his stories for years, so be sure to drop him some subs, tell him 420 sent you. He's a good dude, all right? He's the one that inspired me to get this, man. Love my Gore-Tex. Wait, why are we here again? Oh yeah, closet grow tips, I got you. As most of you guys know, I've been doing runs in a closet for, I mean, the lo I mean, as long as I can remember, and I feel like people watching my videos don't really have that much space, so if you you don't have that much space but you know you have maybe like a walk-in closet or you know even a regular closet that you're just not using honestly it's a great place to get a couple of grow runs under your belt and listen guys if you can only run like one or two ladies don't think that you're gonna get a crap yield you know what i mean like if you do it right, you can get some crazy good weight. My last run, I got 1.5. One, I got one and a half pounds on two Girl Scout cookies. So you can't even say that closet runs suck. The problem that a lot of people have, especially beginners out there, it's not about how many ladies you can cram into one space. It's about what you can do with said ladies. So that's gonna be like my early morning spiel of the day. So now we can get right back on to talking about the top tips if you're planning on doing a closet run. Tip number six. Seven, invest in adjustable curtain rods and nails. Let's just say that you have a closet or grow space where you don't have anything to hang your light hangers onto. Just get some adjustable curtain rods, but don't be an idiot like I was who was Listen guys, all right, I'm throwing myself under the bus here for you, all right? I was definitely the one to put up the curtain rods and what happened was the end result was somebody slammed the door and shook the old apartment building. I know I've mentioned this story multiple times, but like I'm putting it into perspective right now since we are coming out with this video. And what happened was, the light snapped my ladies in half. I was, it was looked really weird because you know how the main line looks like that? It ended up looking like that. Yeah, it was crazy, but I don't even know how, but like even with even though it broke, I still got a pretty decent yield out of it. So what you wanna do is, you don't wanna go through what I went through. Make sure to hammer in some nails right below where you're gonna have the curtain rod sitting on, but make sure to take measurements and don't just eyeball it or, you know, your curtain rod is gonna end up looking crooked like this or like this. The point is, it's not gonna be straight, bro. Tip number six, prep your closet from bugs. I promise you, you can look everywhere on the internet. You will not find this tip anywhere but here. This especially works if you're in carpet and what I recommend you guys doing is before you start setting up your closet, sprinkle some cinnamon and rosemary all over the floor. Like how I did that, I don't know. Bugs will absolutely hate it. They hate cinnamon, they hate rosemary. Sprinkle them bitches on there. You can sprinkle it as a top dress, but you can also do it on your closet floor as like a first line of defense. And I don't know, I don't know what it is about bugs but they absolutely hate rosemary and especially cinnamon. Tip number five, get pot elevators. This isn't for people only doing closet runs. This is the one tip where it kind of goes for everybody. Don't let your container sit in drain trays, please. I shouldn't have to even say it. That way you don't have a whole bunch of stagnant water just sitting. And don't be the guy that's gonna be like, man, it's just gonna soak up, it's gonna dry up. Honestly, that's bullshit logic. Spend the extra couple of bucks and just get some pot elevators and minimize the risk of running in anaerobic conditions. Tip number four, measure everything you can. This is especially big if you're doing a closet run because you don't wanna get a light or even a piece of equipment that you're not gonna be able to fit in your closet. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of it, right? So before you go out and you buy your next light make sure to take measurements of your closet and make sure it's actually gonna fit in there you know like like for me I have a whole bunch of bar style lights that I can use but I can't use it it's just not gonna fit into my closet so what I do is I still use my ES 300 ripped green sunshine company miss you guys the reason I use that ES 300 is because it fits absolutely perfectly in my closet so 
don't be trying to go out and buy like a Scorpion 650R when you only have like two feet by three feet to work with. That didn't make sense, bro. Tip number three, prepare for contingencies on lights out period. I would most likely assume that wherever your closet is gonna be, you could potentially get light leaks. I mean, you you live there, right? <laughs> so you're gonna have to prepare yourself here. You can set everything up the way I do where my lights go on at 6 a.m. and they go off at midnight. You also, I know this is gonna be like a tip most people won't tell you, but trust me, I've tried it. You also don't need to have your lights on exactly 18 hours. Like you don't need 18 six. I mean, it's preferable, but like, you know, you could get away with maybe 17 hours if that's gonna work out a little bit better for you. I've done it multiple times and it's not gonna be enough to kick them into flowering. I would stretch it to maybe 16 hours, but I wouldn't go below that because then you start getting into that danger zone. You don't want that. The reason you wanna have your lights on during the day is that way if you sleep at night, it's gonna be a lot easier to have those lights off at that time as opposed to having your lights off, you know, like during the middle of the day. If you do work nights and you wanna have your lights off period during the day so that way you know you can kind of you know when you're actually awake and lucid you could actually work on them and check them out and everything you can get away with having the door shut for a couple of hours like i know you're not i know it's not gonna be good for the air circulation part which we're gonna get into a little bit later on but you can get away with it for a couple of hours it's not gonna kill you but of course make sure your humidity level isn't through the roof though you got to make sure to check on that tip number two i literally just mentioned it and that is air circulation of course i can't show you my setup right now just because of youtube being what they are of course you patreon members you already know what my setup is and all the videos that i've shared with you guys but what you can do is you can keep your closet door cracked open maybe even like a foot and what you want to do is have an oscillating fan at the lowest setting just giving your ladies a gentle breeze listen guys you want a gentle breeze look at your leaves make sure even if they're moving like like this every once in a while like every time it turns you're fine you don't need no hurricane going on up in there bro honestly that's all you really need to do this doesn't have to be complicated horticulture is not complicated people make it complicated it's not like with a tent where, you know, you have to have them in different directions and you're dealing with monkey fans sliding down the poles or anything like that. So just make sure you have an oscillating fan pushing some air into your closet. What would also make it a little bit better is if you have a carbon filter that's on maybe like a medium setting. Like I had mine on six. I've had it on for... I think maybe since maybe like the five, the fifth week of veg or something like that. So what that's gonna do is you have your oscillating fan and that's at the bottom half of your closet. And then it's gonna pull that air up from the carbon filter and you're essentially always gonna be recycling your air that way. That's what I do and my ladies are praying right now. Also guys, don't freak out because you can't see my setup right now. I have a bean to harvest video coming out. I've been documenting it since the very beginning and you guys are gonna see everything that you want and I will have video footage of my entire setup. I promise you, you're not gonna miss a damn thing. You're gonna see all that good stuff, so just relax, it's coming. Tip number one, trellis alternative. People are probably not gonna mention this, but obviously in a closet, it's gonna be really hard to have a trellis net and I'm not really a fan of them anyway because they're just a pain in the ass to remove at the end of flowering with all the weaving it's going on in there you pull it up and you rip everything oh, it, it, it's terrible don't do it what you can do is if you're worried about your flowers being too heavy and branches breaking just keep giving them silica from middle of edge until the end of flowering so that way you don't really have to worry about broken branches or anything like that it's just easier than a trellis net I like to call it my invisible trellis net so hopefully you guys enjoyed these closet tips and if I might have left something out, totally drop it in the comments section below. Everything I tell you guys is all based on experience. It's not like, you know, I went on forums and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just talk about this just for the sake of making a video. That's not the case, you know, I enjoy doing this. I've been doing this for 11 years nonstop without any real kind of break. Maybe I had like a, like a month off, you know, after the last run, but other than that, man, like I've just, I've just been doing this, I just love it. Also on a real note here, me not showing my stuff as much as a lot of other creators has nothing to do with my ability to grow. I promise you that. That's why we're coming out with the bean to harvest video because I feel like we haven't really done anything like that. Like I know we did grow vlogs last summer and even our first year on the channel, but like at the end of the day, it's still a business, you know what I mean? And I still have to play by the rules, so that is what it is. That's why we have a Patreon community so you guys can see everything that we got going on and share a whole bunch of tips and my methods and everything like that. Smoke sesh live streams. It's, a, it's always a good time. Heck, guys like Cali Green. Cali Green actually emailed me maybe three weeks ago. I showed him my setup and everything I got going on. And even the CLTV gang, shout out to Rob and Trey. Love you guys. You guys are the best. I know I haven't hit you guys up in a bit, but I'm still thinking about y'all. They've all told me that, you know, I know what I'm doing. And that's honestly, that's good enough 
enough for me. That is good enough for me. Haters are gonna hate, but at the end of the day, I'm just gonna keep doing what I love. 420 scene PSA of the day. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do. And if that's the case, you know what? Fuck them. Keep doing what you do and enjoy what you do. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. But before we close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. Be sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Also, super important right here, turn on that post notification bell. You know that notification bell? I want everybody to click that, like literally right now. Right freaking now, bro. That way you guys don't miss out on any future video. Why would you wanna miss out on any 420 scene future videos? Like. That's a crime in itself, bro. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.